Hi, I'm Sarah, and it's time for Amazing Race to talk Amazing Race, but I don't have David, you guys. So the next best thing, our very special James Cohen. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for joining. Oh my gosh, Sarah, you always know I love joining you and being a part of Nerdtainment, especially when it's to talk about the amazing race. Yes. Yay. Well, I appreciate that. Love that. Uh, I should have given you an intro equal to what you did yesterday on your stream. <laughs> my gosh. Oh my God. But you know, that was the first time I have had Rachel and Corey <laughs> on our recaps. So I just felt like they like kind of deserved it. I've been around yes. with entertainment for a while. You know what I mean? I mean, that's true. That's true. But you deserve it. I mean, everyone knows and loves James. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner <laughs> is what you are. Uh, yay. Hello, everyone in the chat. Um, I forgot to, my, to do my, but first, if you're new to this channel, please click subscribe <laughs> and give this video a thumbs up. Got to do the official stuff. We're going to talk about episode four, uh, part two of a very long Part leg two. slash mm -hmm. couple legs slash I don't know something to to be determined what we really consider this uh James got a whole bunch of drama started with is it a leg <laughs> is it two legs well, I feel like everyone's perspective is so interesting when it comes to that. Um, I think from just like a racer perspective, a viewer perspective, a super fan perspective. So I really like the conversation it sparked yeah. because everyone's reasoning and explanation of what the leg necessarily is, in theory, could make sense. So that's why it's such an interesting topic of conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, I agree. And uh, no matter what, it, we're going to be here to talk about <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Amazing race producers. <laughs> we're going to talk about it. Daniel, I hope this is your first time live and not alive, but welcome to being alive as well. <laughs> um, it's good to be alive. Uh, okay. We are headed to Cafe Tudic. And they get teased that maybe there's going to be some yummy coffee involved here. But no, we're just getting a clue that says detour or detour, as we like to call it, stand or deliver. Now, in your recap, you and Will talked about what you would choose. But will you please tell us what you think you would have done? Yeah, I think we would have probably gravitated towards Stan just because mm -hmm. of the attention, the attention to detail aspect of this detour. Um, also, I mean, Will brought up a really good point that knowing that it was a keep on racing leg, I mean, those types of legs are incredibly exhausting and it definitely right. takes a toll on you. And I feel like doing something that was very physical, not knowing what mm -hmm. the next task would be thereafter, it's a crapshoot. So like why exert physical energy and Will and I just, I think, would have been better at the market just because it is so, like, it, it's a little tedious, but it is very, like, laid out for you. You just have to have a good eye and pick up with that attention to detail. So I think naturally we would yeah. have done stand. If this one's complicated because uh, I, first off, am, like, never going to a market. Uh, that's one of my rules. Um <laughs> I also prefer not to be judged if possible, right? Um, but I'm also going to choose plenty of things that do require judgment that maybe are less physically demanding. So I really did feel like this was a complicated decision to make. Right. Um, the details of the the market, the stand, making the stand look right is totally doable. You might miss something like we see Annalie's going to miss the red bucket. Um, <laughs> but it didn't seem like everyone missed that. 
Yeah, that we know of. It reminded yeah. me so much of when Will and I had to hook up that damn horn in Columbia <laughs> on our season. <laughs> that little red bucket was very triggering. Um, but yeah, I think because, it, I mean, markets, you're right. Like, it's such a crapshoot. It can be very hit or miss. Um, you're kind of at the beck and call of the market vendors in terms of how successful you are. But because the display is there and you already know what type of um, fish you need to get for the stand, it just seems a little bit more straightforward. Um, but the little red bucket is, of course, the detail that I think, yeah. uh, as we saw, tripped up Anna Lee. Um, but you're right. Like you're being judged. You never really know what you're being judged on, per se. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's in the additional information within the clue. But... Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is a complicated detour. Like, how do you really decide? Yeah. I also would just like to plead to Amazing Race producers. I know that Asian markets are a big thing, but I can only handle so much of fish gasping for air. That is a big bother to me. Like, watching something who's suffocating on television, I just don't find engaging television. And so I really plead with the producers that yes, I get it's a thing, but let's let's think of something else to do. That's a, that's a fair a point. Yeah, that's a fair point. And it's the same thing with like eating tasks in general nowadays. Mm -hmm. I feel like we've evolved so much as a society and knowing that like forcing people to do that when it's like maybe against what they believe or how they feel or their dietary restrictions, it can be not enjoyable to watch as a viewer. Yes. So true. Um, but okay, let's see. We've got, like we said, Stephen and Ali are going to do the stand. Joel and Garrett are going to go over to deliver. We get a pretty balanced uh, group of people at each of the detour. This mattress d detour does seem grueling. This is exhausting. Um, this is a lot. It's very exhausting. And like, of course, like Jeremy and Liam beasted it. Like they were really the only team to like successfully bring two mattresses yeah, <laughs> at right. once. Um, and also them dropping off their backpacks at the hotel to go back yeah. and get mattresses. Like, really brilliant strategy. Um, but I think that says a lot to just like how the leg was designed. If, if it's a good detour where, you know, it's pretty split between the teams, like they did their job. I think the challenge producers did their job where it's better than that, than all the teams just going to one side of a detour because then you miss out on what the other side is and it's not as interesting. Um, yes. Uh, the chat is saying I had a glitch Am my back. Is everything okay? Um, yeah, the, Apparently Todd and Ashley also put their bags down and Joel and Garrett said they like hid their bags in some sort of stairwell alcove because I guess they didn't think about the room. But yeah, key to take off your backpacks. My gosh. Yeah. You can't like genius. carry the mattresses and your backpacks. Good Lord. Um, yep. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, yes. Liam and Yeremy did a great job. Uh, Corey falls down the stairs. We get pivot jokes, which I am the biggest Friends fan. So thank you for that. Um, <laughs> did you say you were not a big fr Friends fan, James? I just don't, I don't know the show well enough to be like, oh my gosh, Friends. Where like my friends who love Friends definitely picked up on it. And I was like, I just don't get the reference. Okay, I have a pivot shirt. I'm like, should have been wearing it today. Like, I have a pivot shirt, <laughs> James. I like, love that. I love not that. Yeah, I know a lot of Friends fans love that moment. <laughs> yes, it's a huge, it's a huge moment. Um, so you need to watch more Friends. I know, I know. It's available out there. Um, okay, uh, well, how do we feel about uh, Ashley breaking her finger? AKA yeah, I mean, Todd I mean, has done it a thousand times. Right. That, that comment cracked me up. Um, we did get a finger update from Ashley during our recap over the weekend. She was in the live mm -hmm. chat and she said it was just bruised. Yeah. Um, I think it was a little black and blue if I remember correctly, but not necessarily broken, but I mean, 
to feel that while doing this type of physical detour, I can only imagine the discomfort she must have been in. Um, but she really pushed through. Like she really was able to keep doing it. It's one thing to like say, oh my gosh, my fingers are broken or they hurt and then like give up. But she still did the task. So power to Ashley. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of people, I mean, I thought it was hilarious that Todd was like, yeah, I break my fingers all the time. Like get all over, time. let's go. Um, <laughs> But, you know, you got to remember that because people love to complain and be like, Todd was not supportive. Uh, they know each other way better than we do. Right. Like if I said to my husband, I've broken my finger, he's going to stop and he's going to check on my finger because I don't um, I power through before I get dramatic. Does that make sense? But from what we've heard and learned, Ashley's going to get dramatic first. She still powers through, obviously. And Todd knows that. So he's like, suck it up. Well, let's get up through this. It's very much mine and Will's dynamic. I think we're very <laughs> similar in that regard. I am very reactionary to like that. I would be like, uh -huh. oh my gosh, like I, but I scraped my knee or ow, my <laughs> fingers hurt. Like I would be very reactionary as well. But Will being Will, he would also know me well enough to say like, okay, just suck it up and like yeah. push through. And then we'll, we'll, we'll handle it afterward, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so yes, everybody just remember they know how to be married. They're okay. All right. <laughs> So after we, um, everyone's going to kind of do the stand or deliver and we're going through that, we're going to go to a temple to get the next clue um, and make a wish. Well, I guess they call it a pagoda. It's a pagoda temple, something. Uh, and they're gonna make a wish to get their next clue. Everybody said they wanna win the amazing race or win <laughs> this leg. How'd you feel about these wishes? Um, I, I mean, the task itself, I love these particular moments on the amazing yes. race because it really forces you as a racer to slow down mm -hmm. and also to just really appreciate your surroundings and the culture that you are immersing yourself into. So I really loved it, especially on a keep on racing leg where these teams mm -hmm. have been on the go, especially teams who are on the second flight to Vietnam because they were on a bus pretty much all night and then straight to the dock you know, to go off and do their boat task and pass out fruit. So like they've been on yeah. the go. Yeah. So I just feel like this type of moment was so well placed in the leg. Mm -hmm. um, and I just loved seeing the teams talk about their wishes. And I just thought it was cute. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I love any time they make you race and then stop. And I also love anything that's like the local culture is lovely. Um, I just thought, you guys, not everyone can win the amazing race. So get creative with your wishes. Uh, I appreciated that Joel and Garrett did a, more of a family wish. And did, then didn't Liam and Yeremi maybe? Or am I making that up? Oh, did they? Or maybe it's I just the episode they're... was so heavy about their relationship that maybe I just assumed I know, you just that assumed. their wishes. Yeah. <laughs> more about them. It might have been. Yeah. Yeah, they had a very thoughtful episode for them. But Todd and Ashley did uh, Wish for World Peace. So I appreciated yes. that as well. Yes. Yeah, especially uh, Jocelyn and Victor, though, when they said we want to win the Amazing Race. I was like, okay, this was a pretty prominent wish. Like, I remember this wish of everyone else's wish. And it's either going to set them up for, like, the winner's edit moving forward. And they're going to, like, think back to this moment. Or they're going home this episode. It was one or the other. Yeah. And I thought it was really savage of the editors. To put that in there. Editors were like, they wish for what they wish. They wish for what they wished. It's getting cut in. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Lair Liam and Jeremy, like they were so heavily in this episode. And we have been getting more and more of them. And it feels like they're emotional most of the time that we see them. And they're talking about each other and their relationship that I really was convinced that this is this is their goodbye. Right. I feel like 
when you love and know reality television like we do, you start to like psychoanalyze the edit and like what the editors are trying to convey to the audience. Yeah. So I was for I was worried too for a minute. I was like, wow, we're really getting a lot of Liam and Yermi. Does this mean they're going to get eliminated? But like one thing that really stuck out to me about them this entire leg is just how composed they were, how positive they were. And knowing that they were quote unquote dead last, that didn't stop them. That never, they never had like a defeatist attitude. They still powered through. They had a very positive outlook and were supportive of each other. And I just think it really made sense that we got so much of Liam and Yeremy in this episode because it kind of applied to their story. Like hearing their backstory a little bit more, you're like, wow, they've really come full circle. They've come so far to be able to like work together as a team. And like, I started to get, I I actually cried twice because of these two, but Mm. the one moment where they were talking about how like, you know, before, like he never was standing by me or uh, something along those lines. And then he's like, but now when I look back, he's always running right behind me. And I just like kind of lost it. I was like, these boys, I just like, I, I don't know. For me, I just think they're so rootable. And I really, really loved them so much after this episode. How do you feel about their ability to improve on the race? I mean, I think this was kind of like that leg. I think they kind of proved to themselves that there is obviously so much room for improvement. They know that they can handle tasks together and that you're sure if a challenge is challenging, it's not them versus each other. It's them versus the task. And I think Mm -hmm. because of that mindset and after having four legs now under their belt, they are able to kind of find their momentum moving forward. So I'm hopeful that this is setting them up to keep powering through and performing well. Yeah. I last episode, I mean, they were my first draft picks and then they just haven't <laughs> haven't done well and last they're episode, creeping up I, the ranks they are but i was so worried about them i was like i just don't see them improving but this episode does give me a little bit of hope and maybe they i mean they pushed so much to just survive in this episode so right and it's like it's such a contrast to jocelyn and victor right like Mm -hmm. they were at the top the first two legs and then they kind of crashed and will and i have always said after our amazing race experience specifically is that sometimes it's not good to come off strong right off the bat because as the competition dwindles down there's really no room for mistakes Mm -hmm. where at the very beginning, when there is more teams, you can learn from those mistakes and start to really find your momentum early on and build your way up. So maybe that's, that's going to be, you know, the same for Liam and Yeremi. Oh, they're so pretty. Come on. You guys can do it. (laughs) Well, uh, we're going to learn here that the next task is a roadblock. And when I see what this is, I kind of got really excited. It's who is a matchmaker and it's clear to us. Some people are going to get it quick. Some people are not. And this, it does not matter where they are in the order at this point. Yeah, this was definitely a needle in a haystack challenge. There was definitely a little bit of luck involved, but I think a lot of it had to do with patience I also thought it was incredibly brutal that the pit stop was like right there. So not only do you have this added pressure of of, like, it's a roadblock, it's riding on me, I don't want to let my teammate down. But then you have this added pressure of seeing other teams ahead of you get the check, get their clue, and then hit the pit stop. And as teams start to go, you're like, oh, shoot. And I, I just, I can't even begin to imagine just how stressful this entire Mm -hmm. roadblock must have been. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's already stressful, right? You're like, where's my tile? What, what is it? And then to see people just one by one pushing you to the back and finishing is just adding a whole other layer that I loved. And it was hilarious how some teams like immediately were like, Oh my God, I found the tile. Thinking that like, 
that was it. And then they were like, oh, wait a minute. Like there's that one minor detail that I need to start looking for. Like it was just such a well-designed roadblock. I mean, these last two legs in Vietnam have been incredible. Like I've loved yeah. both episodes. The momentum is there. And then to end this keep on racing leg on this type of task, I just thought it was chef's kiss. I, it was right? beautiful. As a viewer, I loved it. Yeah, it was hilarious when people are like, this is it. I found it. Oh, my God. And then you're like, oh, sweet, sweet child. You do not have it. <laughs> uh, keep looking. Although Robin and Chelsea, which one is it? Chelsea? Chelsea. She, she really did find hers pretty quickly. And I loved just the little bit of a, a, a human moment in terms of we get to know Chelsea a little bit and the relationship she has with her daughter and how they practice mm -hmm. this type of thing together before going on the race. I just thought that was such a cute, cute moment. And she even posted this like video clip of her daughter watching that portion of the episode and like, oh, seeing yeah. her face in the episode. And it was just so, it was just adorable. I loved it. That's cute. That's great. Um, well, Anna Lee is going to get here first, right, to do the tiles. And it's going to take her a while to find her tile. She openly starts to try to work with people because she's been there forever. Um, but we get to see that she does not help Todd. But then she is annoyed that Chelsea's not going to work with her towards the end. How do we feel about this? Look, I was so excited when she's like, I'm not going to tell Todd. I was yes. like, yes, girl, like your head's in the race. Like this is not the type of task where you actually want to lend a helping hand to another team. No, mm -hmm. the pit stop is right there. So yeah, right keep there. that information to yourself. Brilliant. But then when it flipped and I was like, wait a minute, like how, how is this playing out? Like, I'm a little confused why you're upset that Chelsea didn't necessarily help or engage with you. It just, it makes me feel like there's a little bit more going on that maybe we as viewers aren't seeing between yeah. the team dynamics. Cause I was just yeah. like, what? Like, right. and again, I'm thinking maybe there was something we missed with the Todd and Ashley interaction. I mean, the Todd mm -hmm. and Anna Lee interaction too. Like it just, mm -hmm. you know, these little moments are so easy to heighten drama as for a viewer. So I, I always need to question like, what are we not seeing? That kind Agreed. Of this is, this moment reminded me of previous seasons, yours being one of them where we start to kind of hear and, and pick up on relationships that we're just not fully aware of. Right. So exactly. her sort of like having a full opinion about Robin and Chelsea made me feel like this is not from this one moment of a tile no. situation. It's this running. It has to be running a little bit deeper. And I'm sure we'll continue to see it. I mean, producers aren't going to drop these little nuggets in there for just the sake of it, unless it's going to continue to build. I mean, this is two episodes in a row where like an editor's choice has shown, like, you know, Chelsea making the charmed life comment in episode three. And then here we have Anna Lee getting upset with Chelsea during the road. I just, I feel like this is going to be like something that comes to a head. Maybe it's yeah. going to be um, setting up a storyline for the U-turn. Right. Um so I love it, obviously, because it makes it more interesting to see the the, di the different dynamics among the teams. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I don't love that, you know, a team might be on the outs, but it's definitely, the editing is definitely pointing us in a way that maybe Robin and Chelsea are not in with some other teams. Although a lot of these teams are barely know each other at this point. I'm hearing right. in other teams recaps that they're like, I have barely spent any time with these teams if they're on different planes and buses and, and such. Um, so yeah. yeah, we're just starting to build some of these relationships, which is why we love a good U-turn coming up. <laughs> I so cannot we'll wait. All right. Uh, <laughs> vote and stuff. I mean, my goodness. We're gonna definitely mix up the placement here. So some of these earlier teams that have been looking, what we see, I believe what we see is Todd get it first and seemed confused about he didn't seem to know to run to the pit stop. We see Chelsea get it really quickly and it seems like she knows and they just go giving them the first place of this leg. 
Correct. Um, Steve and Anna Lee, though, are also going to run quicker, pushing Todd and Ashley to third place when it looks like they might have been able to be first had mm -hmm. he been a little more clear on the clue. Is that what you yeah, saw? Yeah, because like, well? if I'm not mistaken, they weren't given like a clue right at the end of this the clue said like once you complete this roadblock find phil at the pit stop so yeah. i think it might have been like the show is so like there's a formula and there's a format and i think todd must have gotten so used to like getting a physical clue at the end of a task mm -hmm. and that maybe kind of was the the slip up in his brain of like what do i do like where do i go but anna lee of course she was like on it she's like we gotta run we gotta go to we gotta go to phil she's yelling at her dad like um, so that's probably what I think might have happened. Yeah. That. And it, it sounded like from Todd and Ashley's recap, it sounded like he yelled out loud eventually when he figured it out, Ashley, let's go, which then gave Steven and Anna Lee that information. So she didn't have to stop and figure it out. She heard you know, that they're running to the pet stop. Interesting. So I mean, that now is, know. that's the upside of not getting it first is you <laughs> pick up on information, right? It's um, true. So our top five here, we're going to see go into the pit stop, Robin and Chelsea first place, Steve and Anna Lee, Todd and Ashley, Joe and Ian, and they're all going to stay on the map because this is going to start to happen like really quickly. And then Rob and Corey round out our top five. Pretty nice top five there. Yeah, I'm excited to see the times for next mm -hmm. week because of how many teams are bunched up together at the pit stop. Like, I feel like on our season, it was very rare for teams to share a pit stop together. Mm -hmm. I remember one time Will and I were at the pit stop doing our little pit, our Matt interview with Phil, and we were immediately rushed off because another mm -hmm. team was coming. So, I just, I love when teams are on the mat together. Oh, yeah. We had a whole crew of them here. This, but I guess being right there and Phil's right there and you run over and you get your tile and there you go. <laughs> um, we, so Joel and Garrett seem to be like the biggest time loss here, right? Like they did that. They were first at the mattress. They did it. Um, they get to this tile thing pretty early and it has taken Joel forever to do this. Now they said in their recap that Joel was unaware of how many tiles he was supposed to look at and that he spent way too much time in one section thinking that was the only section interesting yeah that seems like hmm. a huge error yeah one of those where garrett was like you know he's not able to help and he is like telep telepathically trying to say like see where everybody else is going there are more tiles and he yeah he i wonder like how long it took for him to like realize that, especially if, we're, if there are other teams there kind of all over the grounds. Mm -hmm. Like, I wonder when it kind of like registered in his brain of like, oh, it's not just this area, it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. It seems like it what took a really long time. He was really focused on the tiles, not paying attention, and missed that note. So they're going to fall back here. Um, but some people are, are going to be able to move up a little bit. The, the last two, though, you guys, this tension was wild. I mean, we're starting to see, like, we're dwindling down to our last teams. They're running off to see Phil. Um, sixth place, Liam and Yermi. Amazing from dead last. Good job, guys. Seventh place, Andrea and Milena. How much can we stop and talk about them, James? How much do you love them? I love them so much. I love Andrea and Milena. They are so fun to watch. So fun. I die when they run through streets and say out of town, out of towners. Out of towners. Yeah. I. They just seem like they're having the time of their life, and like that's they what did. the Amazing Race is all about. 
And I know everyone's like, oh, but they're at the bottom of the pack. Like, I just, I don't see them, you know, going far in the race. But I'm like, I think just how positive they are might surprise people and them going a little bit deeper than I think we realize. I just really, really yeah. like the two of them and their attitudes. I do too. I agree so much. I, they're so entertaining, but have great positive attitude, but also have really good instincts, I think, for the race. Like we've seen them have to choose to wait for a station. And I just feel like they make great choices knowing their skill set. And then yeah. I think they're doing wonderfully. I love them. I want more of them. They're great. Yeah. So that's seventh place. Greg and John are going to come in eighth. Uh, I enjoy them. I feel like they're stronger than eighth place. So keep doing better, guys. <laughs> and then Joel and Garrett. Finally, ninth place. And here we are down to our last two teams. Uh, Morgan became like a Peloton instructor. She became a boot, boot camp instructor. She was like, do not let them outwork us. Let's go. She was <laughs> so passionate on the side. I feel like Jocelyn might have like become a little bit more emotional, like worry. Uh, but this was this this is tense. Yeah, I uh, I feel like not only was it extra tense because of them being in the bottom two and really like fighting for that last spot, knowing it's a non-elimination, but also knowing you used an express pass on the leg before when this is a task that you should use an express pass on, and especially in a situation where you're fighting for your life in the race. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I can't begin to imagine just like the myriad of emotions Morgan was feeling while watching, especially her analogy of like, it's like watching your teammate drowning and not being able to help. Um, and then also on the flip side, Lena, the added pressure of like not letting her sister down, right? knowing that they don't have the express pass to fall on. And now it's just her and Victor in a field of tiles mm -hmm. trying to beat out Victor to get that last spot at the pit stop. So uh, oh. I, can't, I, I, I don't want to be in their shoes. <laughs> right. But I have to say, this is great television. Uh, this is so good. So good. And one of the reasons I love this kind of task is like, it just did not matter when you showed up to it. You, yep. you have to be smart about it, but it's also got luck involved. Um. Let's talk about this express pass because you have been vocal that it was not the time to use it when they used yes. it. Yes. Yes. Uh, but my uh, opinion was yes, use it because that was so stressful being all bottlenecked together. Yeah. And I thought, had they not used it, they would have been even further back in the pack. And you only have four legs to use it. You didn't know it was a keep racing. Like there are just totally. a lot of elements that we didn't understand. But of course, now knowing that it was a keep racing and we see that it's just basically luck for this right. last task. Yeah. Obviously, if they could have saved it for this, that makes And it's so sense. easy as a viewer to be like, they should do this or not do this. Yeah. And I think my argument as to why not, and this is, I think, just like, Putting like if Will and I had an express pass on the race, I feel like we would have done it on a detour or a roadblock, not a route mm -hmm. info task. And with this particular task, they were in the second departure group. So they already had three teams behind them or yeah, three. So whether they were bottlenecked or not, they still had teams behind them who are still going to have to make up time. It was a task that was really straightforward. All you're doing is delivering fruit to different boat vendors, and then you'll get your next clue. I think this is when race brain sets in and it was this paranoia of being bottlenecked at this particular task and all these teams backed up and just, oh, we have it. Let's just use it because we have it without really thinking long term of like, well, we still are going to have a task after this where it might not be so straightforward of just right. passing off fruit. So I think at first my reaction was like, oh, it was wasted. But then when I really was like, okay, wait a minute. It's not wasted because the express pass did as it was supposed to. They expressed mm -hmm. right through that task. So it worked. They did it. It was played. 
Yep. In terms of the timing, that's where it's a little gray. You don't yeah. really know for sure. If they were eliminated on this keep on racing, then I, I feel like they would even be beating themselves up of like, why oh didn't gosh. we just save our express pass? Yeah. But because they're still in the race, it's not wasted. They're still in it. They made it through the first four legs and that's how long they had to play it. So Yeah, exactly. Well, good for them. They don't have to stress about it too much because they are going to get the tile rush off and that leaves Victor and Shoslin very clear that they are about to be eliminated because Phil's right there. This is what we're doing. Uh, Victor even said in his exit interview with me that he was like, I thought producers would just be like, go ahead. <laughs> but they made him <laughs> keep looking for the tile and he had to find it. Uh, and this is just so sad. I know, especially because they were such a strong team right from the jump. Oh, right? And to go from the top to the bottom like that, that that sucks. That that yeah, yeah that would hurt. Uh yeah, it's shocking that they had two first place finishes and then now are eliminated. That's quite the extreme. Yeah. But that's I mean, unfortunately, that's kind of part of the race, right? Like you can have a bad day. Luck is definitely a part of it. And that's why, you know, would before you even start the race, producers and the creators really let the teams know, like this race is designed for any team to win. Like mm -hmm. it's not like catering to a certain type of team over another. It there are just so many moving parts and variables that play as to what can help a team be successful versus not. And it was just one of those situations where like they unfortunately lost. Like it just, it was a shock because I think that they had so much potential, but right. again, it just goes to show that anything can happen at any time and any team can really win it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think any team can really win it, but it's a lovely <laughs> thought. And yes. it is, it's definitely not just the strongest people, or we'd see, you know, two bulky dudes winning every year. And that's just not what happens. So, are you calling Will and I bulky dudes? That's Sarah? exactly what I was calling you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, big alpha males uh, just every year. Mm hmm. Uh, guess what? You are heavily leading in our draft points, sir. You know, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised. With Rob and Corey, <laughs> like them placing as well as they have, I was like, oh, they're going to be great. Like, I'm not worried about them. But with Anna Lee and Steve and mm -hmm. Robin and Chelsea coming out of nowhere these last two episodes, I was like, well, damn. Yeah. So, hey. I'm yeah, I mean, Rob and Corey are definitely most consistent here. Um, I mean, Todd and Ashley are also yeah, that's true. very consistent in the top five, but Rob and Corey have higher placements in the top five. Um, but yeah, uh, Steve and Anna Lee, when they do pop up there in the top five, they do very well. So you're getting some good points there. Um, I, so just for reference here, he's got 27 points. You guys, I have four, four whole points. I have really four whole points from Joel and Garrett. Uh, I lost Elizabeth and Ileana. They gave me no points and then they left and I have Liam and Jeremy. Oh. Giving me no points. Oh yeah. Joel, cause Joel and Garrett got second. Um, they got three. second place on leg three. So that's uh, it. Yeah. You're right. They I lost need, that time in the tile. I need my people to get up into the top five. Cause that's really the only place we, we get points guys. Uh, but David's got 17 and Kayla's got 12. So it's a good race between you guys. Seems fun. And I think next week we're even going to see those placements get even more jumbled just based on the previews that they've put up on the YouTube channel for amazing race. The teams are bunched up like those teams. It feels like very much a foot race at every point of this leg. Right. And in the, in the race with the tuk tuks or the rickshaws, whatever vehicle they're in, mm -hmm. even in the commercial and the preview for next step, but like 
it just looks intense and it right. looks like it could be anyone's race next episode and it's going to be an exciting one. I can't wait. Yeah, agreed. I mean, it, seeing everyone on the mat together does seem like their, you know, departure times are going to be pretty close together. Yep. Uh, and it looks like they're fiercely competing with each other. So that is fun. And I do appreciate a mix up of yes. the order, right? And Corey looks like he's struggling in the dance or the movements with the, oh, right. the pottery on top of his head. Find his that head. might knock mm -hmm. him and his dad back mm -hmm. a little bit. So yeah, I think I think we're in for a treat with next week's episode too in terms of the placements. Yay. How are you feeling about the 90 minutes? Have you noticed? You know, I think the pacing of the first two episodes, like I enjoyed it. I'm like, I'm glad it's longer, but seeing the right. pacing of three and four, I'm like, oh, three and four knocks episodes one and two out of the park for me. And yeah. I can only imagine the pacing continuing, but I, I, I do fear a little bit when it gets down to like four or five teams, what is that oh. pacing going to look like for a 90 minute episode? Yes, for sure. <laughs> you have a lot of background packages. Like what's, what's going to happen? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm worried about, but I do love the longer episodes. I hope that does leave more room for like story development and help us mm -hmm. maybe we'll get a little bit more behind. Like if there is tension moving forward with Annalie and Chelsea, like, I don't know, but like, I just think it leaves more room for editors to play around with narratives and sharing more with the viewers. Yeah. And I think, I mean, especially as the teams dwindle, like you've got to add in more stuff. I, I, I just, I can't have an hour of lotus flowers, you know, like that really uh -huh. drug, yeah. but, <laughs> you know, and, you know, produce, it, Amazing Race is hard to produce. Like you just don't always know how it's going to go. You don't know that everyone's going to pick one, you know, challenge over another. Like you just, these, these things you can't really plan for, but if we have 90 minutes, like we just kind of do need people to run to a root info and then to a, a detour and then to a root, like we just need the movement. And you know, it, it, it's a, a little bit later. Sometimes I do wish maybe it was ahead of survivor just cause I, I always mm -hmm. associate amazing race as more of like the family friendly show. Yeah. So nine 30 feels a little bit late, but it's doing wonders for the show on streaming. Like the streaming oh, numbers are high. They're up there. Um, and I think that's that's a very positive thing in terms yeah. of like the life in the show. It's breathing new life again. Yeah. I, it should absolutely be at eight. It should be before Survivor. Like it's much more family oriented than Survivor. But we don't get to schedule it. So no. as long as people are streaming it, that's wonderful. Yes. Um. All right. So is there anyone that you're super worried about that might be mm -hmm. leaving soon? Um, I mean, it's hard to say because the placements mm -hmm. were so all over the place. Um, maybe just based on the preview for next week, it looks like we have a race to the pit stop between a few of the teams. So I don't know, maybe Morgan yeah. and Lena, I would mm. hate to see them go so soon just because I, yeah. I really think they started off strong. They showed how competitive they were, like diving into that express pass task with the bugs, like loved it. I was eating it up just watching it. Yeah. Um, I'm worried maybe about in Andrea and Melina. I mean, they have such a positive outlook and approach to the race, which I think could really help them. But yeah. also they're they're still kind of in the bottom half. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they've got to make up some ground to like continue to be at the top if they want to get yeah. to that point. It's just really tough to say. Yeah. It's really hard to say. I but, know, especially since we went from Victor and Jocelyn number one to gone. Yeah. I, I do think um, Rob and Corey and Todd and Ashley to me, I think, I'm more confident saying I think they have more life in the race than most teams just because of how consistent they've been. So, yeah, I agree. Uh, and I feel like Anna Lee has 
the ability to stick around for a while, but I'm yeah. not sure that Steve, like it's an interesting balance. Like she can push him, but when he yeah. has to do a task by himself, it doesn't seem like he sees the details. And so I, I'm not sure, you know, one thing could possibly send them out. Uh, Liam and Jeremy, I'm very worried about. I'm hoping. Especially with how much turn. story we've gotten that on that yeah. over other teams. Exactly. Yeah. Does that mean they win? I'm worried it does not mean they win. Um, I think those are the ones. And yeah, Morgan and Lena definitely have the skills. But if once you get pushed to the back of the pack, it is so hard to maneuver up and one little thing sends you out, right? Yeah. And I think it's definitely hard to predict too, again, with next week's episode, because I do think it's an equalizer. I think it's mm -hmm. everyone starting the leg at the same time. And I think it really could jumble up the placements even more. So let's revisit that question after next week's episode. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Well, James, thank you again for joining. And I want to remind people that James and I are usually on Twitter during the episodes. So it's so true. Twitter, it's not Twitter anymore, but you get it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, come chat with us during the episodes. And everyone in the chat who's with us right now, thank you so much. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us. If you're watching later, leave a comment. Who are you worried about? How did you feel about this matching tile? Sort of mixing everything up. Are and what so team sad? do you think is going to get U-turned? I'm so Oof. ready for the U-turn. I want to know. Is it coming soon, you think? when When's it going to come? There's what? Nine You're not going to wait too left. long. I mean, it wasn't advertised in next week's episode. Mm -hmm. And I think they would have advertised it because it gets you excited about it. So I'm going to yeah. say the week after. I would say within the next two weeks after this. I agree. Week. Yeah, yeah I don't think they're going to wait too long. It will no. be a couple of weeks. Especially now, if it's a vote, you need a, I think you need a few, you need a handful of teams. Yes. So I would say at the final eight or the final seven, I think we'll see the U turn. Ooh, I love it. I'm ready for it. it. Yes. <laughs> uh, overall, I love this cast and I'm loving the season. And I think they're figuring out the 90 minutes. So, um, 10, 10 guys, 10, 10. Okay. Uh, James, anything else you want to like promote or let people know about? No, I am actually leaving for New York tonight. I'm very excited. I am going to meet up with Aparna for my season. I haven't seen her since her wedding. It's been way yeah. too long. So we'll spend some time together. And then Wednesday night, I'm doing a little bit of a viewing party with, uh, some of the racers from this season. So I, I'll get to meet Corey and Greg and, um, Joe, Ian, and Morgan. So I'm excited to meet some of the newest racers. Yes. Oh, that sounds fun. Enjoy that. Thank you again. Thanks, we'll see you everybody later. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>